It's sometimes a little jolt to an all-out roller coaster ride. Turbulence is a routine event when it comes to flying, but it scares the life out of a lot of travelers. Fortunately, experts say if you follow directions, your chances of getting hurt are slim to none. The first thing to remember with turbulence is that it's almost never as bad as passengers think. In severe turbulence, it might seem like you dropped 100 feet, but it was probably not even 10. With quite a number of documented turbulence experienced worldwide in the past week, we turn our attention to this phenomenon and what passengers should know. A warm welcome to Vision this week on Channels Television. I'm Bukola Joe Okitumbi. Passengers making their way into the aircraft. Others seated as the plane and its crew prepare for takeoff. Then traveling at a cruising altitude with everything appearing to be going smoothly. The scenario above is usually the norm, but sometimes things may go wrong due to nature's act like that of the Etihad flight from Abu Dhabi to Indonesia, where some 30 passengers were injured and nine others hospitalized in what has been described as severe turbulence. When turbulence happens, it's a spiller of coffee, jostler of luggage, filler of barf bags, and even rattler of nerves but never a factor of plane crashes. So what exactly is this? Turbulence usually occurs when a mass of air moving at a particular speed meets another mass of air that's moving at a different speed like an aeroplane. For most of the time, it happens because of weather conditions such as thunderstorms or jet streams caused by larger aircraft. It's particularly obvious when flying over mountains. According to the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, turbulence can also be caused by air movement not normally seen, atmospheric pressure, cold or warm weather fronts, and thunderstorms. Most turbulence accidents happen at 30,000 feet or above and in-air turbulence is the leading cause of injury to people on flights. In the US, an average of 58 people get injured during turbulent flights. Here in Nigeria, there are no known statistics, but passengers are more prone to danger when not wearing seat belts. Yeah, all the things are, that, that there are procedures for them. We have, um, if, there's a turbul if there's a turbulence like that, the captain would, uh, in our own procedure, we turn on the fasten seat belt sign, we roll it out twice. It makes a sign. The cabin crew knows what that means. You see the fasten seat belt sign comes on. As a passenger, if you're sitting, the signs is just above your eye level. You could see them. So once you see that seat belt sign, you need to take your seat and fasten your seat belt. And then we make an announcement even before we depart from our stations, from anywhere, would we'll make the announcement to tell you that it is advisable for you to always keep your, uh, um, your, your seatbelts loosely fastened at all time while seated. 
And uh, what we do is we make announcement. Then you see the crew go around just to check that you've properly done it. Some people would fasten their own seatbelt and they'll forget to fasten their infant seatbelts across the there. So you need to check all that and ensure that everything is um, well stood, the bags and all that in the cabin. Then you need to check in your galley area as well to ensure that there's no loose items there that could fall out in the course of uh, the turbulence getting beyond um, the lights kind of turbulence. Flight crews around the world share a common classification of turbulence, light, moderate and severe. The definitions are laid down in flight manuals. Uh, just on a typical day like you see cabin crew sitting down here before we go on a flight we actually have what we call the pre-flight briefing. The captain would have checked uh, the weather and everything and they would tell you uh, what they expect. Apparently, uh, you know, basically what they would expect are things that are in line with the safety that is not going out of safety. But at times when you start this flight, things will just go a bit uh, on the tough side. Uh, the turbulence in our training, it's divided into three uh, sections in our manual. We have it in uh, chapter two of our manual, page 40 precisely. You have the light, the moderate, and the severe. Okay? In the light, you can do, you can still walk around, do the normal job. For the maybe the moderate, you probably could not be, you won't be able to serve. And then when you have the severe, it's such that you have recently in uh, the Etihad aircraft, and that everything got torn and broken apart. But Eric hasn't gotten uh, <laughs> such a, a severe one before. But it could be very terrible at times, very terrible at times. For the fearful flyer, even light turbulence can be upsetting. For pilots, light turbulence is no different to a bumpy road for a taxi driver or a slightly uneven section of track for a train driver. A small but totally safe, inconvenient and very much part of our daily lives. In light turbulence, the aircraft may be deviating by just a few feet in altitude. On the whole, Turbulence is an aggravating nuisance for everyone, including the crew. But then it's also, for lack of a better term, normal. From a pilot's perspective, it's ordinarily seen as a convenience issue and not a safety one. When a flight changes altitude in search of smoother conditions, this is, by and large, in the interest of comfort because planes themselves are engineered to take a remarkable amount of punishment and they have to meet stress limits for both positive and negative G-loads. The level of turbulence required to dislodge an engine or bend a wing spar is something even the most frequent flyer or pilot, for that matter, won't experience in a lifetime of traveling. <laughs>